Hi friends, welcome to the channel. Here you will find fascinating videos on a variety of topics. Subscribe and stay tuned. Who invented eyeglasses? In the Middle Ages, just as now, new products were constantly appearing. Porcelain dishes, mirrors, soap, mechanical clocks, paper, printed books, and eyeglasses. And in many cases, as in the story of eyeglasses, for example, the dates of appearance, technology, and materials of first manufacture are not always clear. Eyeglasses are commonly believed to have been invented in Italy at the end of the 13th century. But if usually inventions were made by scientists and put into practice by craftsmen, it was not so with glasses. According to academician S.I. Vavilov, it is remarkable and at the same time sad that scientists' opticians, who wrote a lot about refractive media, were not involved in the invention of glasses. The first Arab scholar Ibn al Haysam al Hazan in the 10th century reported that if one looked through a segment of a glass ball, he could magnify objects. Having figured this out, the scientist went no further. In the 4th century, the principle of action of lenses was described by English monk, alchemist, and philosopher Roger Bacon. He even suggested that it was possible to help those with poor eyesight. But he didn't. And so, it is said, eventually had to invent glasses by glassmakers. According to one legend, an anonymous glazier, pouring liquid glass into a mold in 1280, inadvertently dripped on a smooth surface. The glass solidified. One side of it became flat and the other convex, and this lens refracted light. The master, of course, rejoiced and set about improving the eyesight of the elderly. According to another legend, the date of invention is 1284, when a certain Salvino Armati was the first to create glasses. There is no documentary evidence, except for the inscription on the tomb. Here rests Salvino dell'Armati of Amati, Florence. Inventor of eyeglasses, God forgive his sins. But when this inscription was made, no one knows. There are other names and dates, 1285, 1289, and other years. In 1306, in Florence, the preacher Giordano of Pisa claimed that he personally knew the man who had made the first spectacles almost 20 years earlier. In the 16th century, when they were already thinking about priorities, it was suggested that glasses were invented by Alessandro Spina, a monk from Pisa. Then, however, the author of this assumption was accused of bias. Glassmakers had nothing to do with it. Man has an amazing property. Knowing where this or that process came to, he restores it in his mind, starting from the result. It's exactly the same story with glasses. Most of the authors of old times mentioning glasses did not tell us what the lenses were made of. And since they are now glass, our contemporaries think that they have always been made of glass. But they weren't. Technology researchers often mention a law passed by the Grand Council of the Venetian Republic in 1300. It was ordered to destroy counterfeit crystal, i.e., supposedly crystal products, but made of glass. This, they say, is an example of the fight against counterfeits. And few people pay attention to the fact that the law was designed to regulate the manufacture of reading stones. Yes, the glasses were called reading stones back then, and they were made of stone, namely rock crystal, a mineral that is pure natural silicon dioxide, a type of quartz. And it is known for a long time that the processing of lenses and assembly of primary glasses was performed by jewelers who had experience in working with rock crystal, and that then the glasses were extremely expensive. Only kings, princes, and other people of the elite could afford them. And by the way, Jewelers, grinding stones from ancient times, could discover the effect of light refraction before any glassblowers. Rock crystal, transparent crystalline quartz, got its name because of its resemblance to frozen water. Greek crystallis means ice. Since antiquity, it has been used to make jewelry, magic balls, and lenses. In addition, in the Middle Ages, topaz and aquamarine were used to make lenses. The latter is a variety of beryl and from the name beryl came the German word brill, eyeglasses. The most popular raw material for the production of glasses, not only for the nobility, but also for people of simpler times, was quartz pebbles polished by nature. It was cut with a string of thin iron wire with corundum from diamond dust. Polished and perfect lenses were obtained. 
It was harder to scratch them than glass ones. Peblas were supplied to the markets of Europe by Bohemia, and after the discovery of America they were brought by ships from Brazil. Glasses as tools of the devil. Since their introduction, eyeglasses have drawn the ire of some church fathers. They believed that they were an invention of the devil and forbade the faithful to use them. They even issued engravings depicting devils wearing spectacles to punish the disobedient. As if to counterbalance such retrogrades, there were paintings on biblical themes where the apostles, saints, and monks were shown wearing glasses. Lucas Cranach placed a character holding glasses to his eyes in his painting, Christ and the Harlot. And the first artistically depicted glasses, as it is believed, the monk Tommaso da Modena, on a fresco in the Church of Treviso, that in Italy, in 1352. There is a portrait of Cardinal Hugo de Provence, he is writing something, and on the bridge of his nose he has a frame with lenses. In the same church, there is a fresco with Cardinal Nicola de Rowan reading a book through a monocle, The Emergence of Glass Lenses. Natural crystal was used to make spectacle lenses until at least 1889. However, chemists worked in the right direction. In 1663, the Englishman Tilson added lead oxide to glass. In 1729, Chester Hall continued his experiments, followed by others. Glass was already suitable for the manufacture of lenses, but it could only be obtained in small crucibles. Finally, the Swiss Guinan, as a result of 30 years of work, found a way to obtain good optical glass in pots with a capacity of up to 400 kilos and since 1811 it became possible to produce glass lenses with a diameter of up to 200-250 meter, in contrast to the small pebble and previous glass. It was only now that glass began to displace natural stone in the manufacture of spectacles. While glasses were taking over the world, craftsmen of different profiles invented, as they would say now, fittings and accessories. They began to frame lenses in metal frames, to attach handles, that's how monocles appeared. They tried to attach glasses to hats. They sewed lenses into a belt, which was tied on the back of the head. They put lenses into iron rings and connected them with a bridge. They adapted to glasses earplugs made of ropes or metal. There appeared glasses with an arched elastic shackle. It pressed the rims of the lenses to the nose. 500 years later, this principle was revived in the design of pince-nez. In the 1700s, glasses for the nearsighted appeared. In 1873, they invented dioptric numbering of glasses. China's eyeglasses failed. Surprisingly enough, China, which surpassed everyone in various inventions, failed with eyeglasses. The only record from 1240 that supposedly there and glasses were also invented before all turned out to be fake. It was made up in the Xfeme century when China began to import glasses from Europe. There are chronicles that tell how in those times the king of Malacca, and this kingdom was visited by Arab and Persian merchants, presented ten pairs of glasses to the emperor of China as a gift. That's it! Thank you for watching the rest of this. If you like the video, don't forget to rate and subscribe.